Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday morning, October 5th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local forecast office for the latest information. Here's Hurricane Matthew, now in the southern Bahamas. This passed over the mountains of eastern Cuba last night, and it spent a little bit more time over the mountains than some forecasts expected, and so the inner core has been ripped up a bit. Uh, when it originally came off Cuba before the sun rose, the eye was nowhere to be seen. We have seen the eye come back during the morning hours. However, there is a large gap in the northwestward quadrant of the hurricane where there is very little banding activity, and uh, this could be caused by dry air coming in, but that doesn't seem to be the case, as if we look at one of the drop zones up at uh, this location around here in the northern Bahamas, we see a pretty moist sounding overall. These red and green lines are the temperature and dew point. They're pretty close together, indicating a deep moist layer below about 400 millibars. There is a little bit of dry air above that, but that isn't a very dry sounding, so it seems more likely that this structural defect is likely simply due to the hurricane passing over Cuba during the nighttime hours. And uh, at this point, a hurricane that passes over Cuba can take up to a full day to recover, and uh, thus we may see Matthew remain pretty close to the same intensity for a part of today. This is the current recon data showing the pressure down, or up to rather, 964 millibars weakened uh, by 20 to 30 millibars since it passed over Haiti and then Cuba last night, and you can see that each pass is about the same right now. So right now the hurricane is not really uh, changing its intensity for the moment, and it could stay that way for a good portion of today, as usually this hurricane will need time to recover from uh, the Cuban mountains that it just passed over. However, the concern is that this is still a Category 3 with winds of 115 miles per hour, and so very dangerous for the islands here in the Bahamas. Hurricane warnings are up for all of these islands except for the Turks and Caicos, which have a tropical storm warning as the core of the hurricane is well to the west of you guys over there. Um, but as we go forward in time, this moves up into the northwestern Bahamas by tomorrow. And if we look at the water vapor imagery at the moment, uh, there's really very little shear over Matthew for the moment. We have a weak trough over the Gulf of Mexico, uh, but outflow from the hurricane is still managing to expand without much impediment, and so there really isn't any shear over Matthew. The water in the northwestern Bahamas is pretty warm, and so the concern is that later on tomorrow and Friday we could see Matthew regain some intensity over this part of the Bahamas as conditions will be favorable and after it has sufficient time to recover from its passage over the mountains we could see some strengthening by that time. Uh, after it moves up uh, closer to the northeastern part of Florida uh, or near nearabouts, uh, shear would likely increase. We have the primary polar jet stream uh, still over the midsection of the country. This will push east over the next couple of days, so by the time the hurricane gets up into this area near east of Jacksonville, shear and dry air would likely start weakening the storm as it begins to move farther to the north and east. But until that point, there is some concern that it could become even stronger than it is now, and it's already a dangerous hurricane uh, to begin with. This is the current track forecast from the GFS. Let me go back to the beginning here. Here's the storm coming off of Cuba this morning, and uh, we see it come up uh, by Wednesday evening into the central Bahamas here tonight, and then near Nassau and Andros Island tomorrow, and then it gets very close still to the East Florida coastline, and it comes right up the coast here, very close by. The European model is pretty similar, and the National Hurricane Center forecast is also very close, as I'll show you in a minute. Um, th again, this ridge to the north here is what's directing this north-northwestward, very close to the coast, and uh, this trough in the Midwest is what will eventually erode this ridge and stop the westward component to the motion. So by the time we get to uh, later Friday, again, this is very close to the coast near Jacksonville, and then eventually Savannah as we get into later Saturday. But then we see that this trough is coming in, pushes this ridge off to the east, and so we see the storm start to take a little bit more of a bend off to the east. Now what has changed in the longer term forecast beyond Friday is that this trough is pretty weak on the models now compared to what it was. Uh, some forecasts a few days ago had a deeper trough in here which was able to bring the hurricane right up the eastern seaboard and into the mid-Atlantic and New England states due to a southerly steering flow. That is no longer the case as we have this uh, less amplified trough and more zonal flow, flat west to east in other words, across the northern portion of the country. That means that the steering flow over the hurricane also becomes more direct west to east, such that as we go forward on the GFS, you see it takes a very sharp turn off to the right here. 
and perhaps even a southerly component to the motion has been forecast by some models in recent runs because again the flat jet up here. Uh, this is good news for uh, states north of the Carolinas as uh, this is less likely now to come up toward the mid-Atlantic and New England states. Uh, we may not be able to quite guarantee that this forecast won't change again, but at the moment the trend is toward a pattern that would tend to redirect the hurricane out into the Atlantic before it can get up this far north. But still keep an eye on the forecast as we have seen changes four to five days out so far with the system and therefore we could still see some more changes uh, during the next couple of days. Here's the latest official forecast from the National Hurricane Center just out at 11 a.m. showing the initial position north of eastern Cuba, winds of 120 miles per hour moving northwest at 12, and uh, that motion is expected to continue through today, tonight, into tomorrow morning when it could be near Nassau and Andros Island. Hurricane warnings up for all of these islands, uh, winds up to 130 miles per hour could be possible in islands close to the core of Matthew, and storm surge up to 15 feet is possible in some of these islands, and given how low these are to the ocean surface, the storm surge can penetrate far inland on some of these islands. This is thus one of the most life-threatening hazards is storm surge flooding with Matthew. Uh, rainfall up to 15 inches is possible as well, adding to the flooding inland. Uh, we get closest approach to Florida or southeast Florida by Thursday evening sometime, and then during the nighttime hours into 8 a.m. Friday, this gets very close to the eastern coast of Florida. Do not focus on the exact path forecast here as it's uh, the hurricane force winds extend several dozen miles from the eye and that's why we have hurricane warnings up here from about Broward County up to north of Cape Canaveral Lake Okeechobee and then hurricane watches extending up to Jacksonville. Much of the eastern coast of Florida could see hurricane force winds from Matthew even if the eye remains offshore and it's not yet clear that the eye will necessarily remain offshore as wobbles within this cone of uncertainty are always possible as the hurricane nears the coast and so it's not clear uh, whether the eye will make landfall and how far inland hurricane force winds could extend. Small deviations to the left or right here can cause big changes to the severity of impacts felt in your particular county so please pay attention to the products from your local National Weather Service forecast office. They will be your best friend at telling you what specifically to expect in your local area. National Hurricane Center products are only going to give you a general picture here. Your NWS local office will take care of what's happening immediately around you. So please stay up to date with the forecast as little changes could occur and this could be a major hurricane impacting a great deal of the Florida coastline during Thursday evening, Friday and uh, into early Saturday morning. It gets up to near east of Savannah, Georgia. And at this point, we start to see some weakening due to the sheer and dry air that we talked about, and then a sharp turn off to the east or even east southeast here during the weekend and into Monday. This takes it a little farther away now from North Carolina, which is good news for them, but keep an eye on the forecast as it could shift back. Uh, you never know. Uh, we've seen the day four to five cone shift before, so keep an eye on it. It's still not clear what impacts Matthew may bring to the Carolinas. And up in, in the mid-Atlantic states, the forecast is well away from you now. Keep a wary eye on the situation just in case, but for now, trends are well away from points north of the Carolinas. Please stay up to date with the National Hurricane Center, and again, your local forecast office will have the most pertinent products to precisely where you live. Uh, please stay informed, prepare for perhaps the worst of Matthew, and hope that uh, it stays a little bit farther offshore. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.